This fishy looking fly is the creation of Theo Anist out of Colorado and has the fairly unique feature of this Mr. Twister type tail, which gives it tremendous action in the water. And it also shares a number of features with the very effective woolly booger pattern and is tied on a jig hook so it rides hook up and is relatively weedless. The breaker is tied on a 90 degree jig hook, in this case a Daiichi 4660 in size 1, but any manufacturer's 90 degree jig hook will work fine. And to that hook I've added a large brass cone head, you could certainly use a tungsten one if you'd like. And the thread I'm using today is Viva's Power Thread in 140 denier and it's black. And I start that thread around the middle of my hook shank and to form a nice base for my materials wrap back all the way toward the bend of the hook. Now, I like to stop my thread at the forward-most tie-in point of my body material so I'll know the farthest point forward in which I can tie those. And for this fly, we're actually going to tie in front of the cone head. So I want to advance my thread to just behind the cone head about to this point, which will leave some space in front of the cone head. And so the front of the thread here marks the farthest most forward point that I'll tie in any of my body materials. The Mr. Twister-like tail on this fly is tied with a product called Fly Tails, and this is a large size. It also comes in small and in many colors other than purple. And you'll notice that near the front of the tail, there's a notch in the tail, and that's our tie-in point for the fly. So that's where we begin wrapping our thread. And of course, it wants to roll over to the other side of the hook, but we'll just pull it back to the near side of the hook because we want the tail tied into the side of the hook so when it's in the water it will run roughly in, in line with the hook. And to help secure it we do a reverse tie-in by pulling the, the tag end back and tying back over that and it makes it very secure to the hook. It is certainly not coming out at all. Similar to a woolly booger, the other tail on this fly is made from strung marabou and we want a tail that is roughly the same length as the hook shank. So I measure the tail against the hook shank and transfer that measurement back and begin my tie in roughly in the middle in the middle of the hook and give it a few wraps. And then to help neatly cut off the marabou, I find it helpful to twist the marabou and pull the material up and then I can cut it off relatively close. Now, to spread the marabou around the hook shank, I just take my thumbnail and I'll, I'll work it back and forth so that marabou will, will move on all sides of the hook. And then just tie it back to just about the same tie-in point where we tied in the, the fly tail. And bring my thread forward back a bit. Now this is an optional material, but to help secure the hackle, I like to tie in some brassy size wire. Here this is ultra wire and silver. And again, this is optional, but to help it from slipping out, I also bend the tip back on it and do a reverse tie-in for the wire to make sure it's very secure to the hook. The hackle for our jailbreaker is just standard saddle hackle, and here I've already stripped all the fuzzies off the bottom and left about a half-inch stem. And I tie this in near the center of the stem, and like I did with the wire and the tail, I bend that tip back and do a reverse tie-in because the last thing we want is for that hackle to slip out on us. Now the other body component for this fly is woolly booger chenille, here antron chenille in medium purple. And I've stripped off some of the, the fuzzy off the outside of the, the chenille and exposed the core and we tie it in by that thread core. That just helps it lay flat on the body of the fly. And then we bring our thread forward to not quite our forward point because here at the front of the fly I still have to tie in legs and a collar. So I want to stop the chenille just back from that forward point a bit. I begin wrapping my chenille forward, and you'll see that it lays nice and flat with that core tied in. And I give it five or six wraps forward, but notice that I do stop short of the front of that thread because I want to leave room for those legs and that hackle. So I tie it off, 
and trim off my excess. We now wrap our saddle hackle forward and you'll notice that I've tied it in with a concave side toward the hook and I'll palmer this forward again very similar uh, to how I do a woolly booger and give it six or seven turns of hackle all the way up to my thread point and then I just tie it off with a couple of turns of thread here and snip off the excess. Now to help secure the hackle, I begin wrapping my thread forward and notice I'm moving it back and forth a bit so I won't trap any of those fibers. So I wrap it all the way up to my thread point and then just give it a couple of loops of thread to tie it in. And when I cut it off, I, I move my scissors up onto the wire so I don't dull the sharp end of my scissors and then just trim off the excess and give it a few wraps of thread here just to secure everything and tie it down. For legs on this fly, I'm using Bard Crazy Legs here in clear and pearl flake. And to tie my legs in, I like to just wrap them in front of the thread around the, the hook shank and then just hold them down either side of the hook and just give them a few wraps to secure and then pull those legs down onto the side of the hook shank and then give them a few more wraps just to tie everything down. Our final material on this fly is a grizzly collar, and here we're using Nature Spirits Grizzly Collaring Hackle. And before I tie the collar in, I'm going to use this little hair clip and pull my legs back and get them out of the way. Now start stripping the little fuzzies from the bottom of, of the hackle, but unlike the saddle hackle, I don't strip all of them. I want to leave a few of them there to give a little more bulk to the front of my fly and a little better action in the water. And then we trim it off to about three-eighths of an inch long. We tie it in near the front of our tie-in point and get it nice and secure because we don't want it pulling out. And then we're only going to give it about three wraps of hackle here, not a whole lot. And a couple of loops of our thread to tie that down. And then trim off our excess. And we pull everything back and give it a few more wraps of thread just to keep everything kind of swept back. And then we give it a four or five term whip finish here behind the cone head. And we will cut our thread off. We now push our cone head back over those materials to kind of keep everything swept back and restart our thread in front of that cone head. Hold it back with a finger and give your thread a few wraps to get it started and trim off the tag end. We now form us a nice thread dam in front of that cone to keep it from slipping and create a nice, nice head on our fly. Again, give it a three or four turn whip finish here. and cut off our tag end of our thread and release our legs and now let's trim them to length. We want them just about the same length as a marabou so we pull one side back, trim it, and then pull everything straight down and trim the other side to match so both sides will be about the same length. Our fly is essentially finished here, but to give it just a little bit of extra du durability, I like to add some UV resin to the front head of the fly. It helps hold the cone in place and gives it that extra measure of durability. Hit it with our UV light to cure everything, and our fly is finished. The combination of the twister tail, the marabou, the hackle and the legs give this fly tremendous action in the water. And it's a great fly for smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, and trout. Pretty much anything that swims.